Well, I had a certain amount of money, and I was still working. So then I quit Look, because I decided that um, there obviously wasn't any money in shorts, but that I then found out how much feature films were being made for, and... Uh, you know, millions, and I had calculated that I could make a feature film for about ten thousand dollars. And uh, well, how did you how did you calculate that? Well, again, by you know projecting the amount of film I'd shoot, figuring that I could get actors to work for practically nothing. You know, work with. Uh, I mean, at this point, I was the whole crew: cameraman, assistant cameraman, uh, you know, director, uh, everything. So I had no cost. So a friend of mine in the village uh, did a script. Were you living in the village in those days? I was living on 16th Street, off 6th Avenue. And uh, he uh, he did a script which was a terrible, sort of dull, uh, undramatic, but very, very serious allegorical story about four soldiers from an unnamed country lost behind enemy lines trying to find their way home again. And it had... Uh, lines in it like uh, we spend our lives running our fingers down the lists of names and, and addresses looking for our real no running our name fingers down the lists of something or other looking for our real names or our real addresses I can't remember what the line is but it was that kind of a thing you know and of course uh, I uh, totally failed to recognize the what I didn't know about making films or Anything, you know, I just thought, well, these other two things have turned out pretty well, but they were documentaries. And, um. The, the second thing had turned out pretty well. Yeah. But I, I, I didn't really know what I didn't know, and I thought, well, Christ, uh, um, there really is, can't be very much more to making a feature film, and I certainly couldn't make one worse than the films that I kept seeing every week. And, um, uh, but, uh, I wasn't satisfied to just uh, make a, a, you know, an interesting film. I wanted it to be a very poetic and uh, meaningful film. And it was a little bit like the Thurber story about the midget, you know, who wouldn't take the bass on balls. <laughs> <laughs> and decided to swing, you know. And uh, so it, uh, I got the film made, and, uh, but it was uh, a very, very dull. And it got an art house distribution. It was called Fear and Desire, distributed by Joseph Burston, who was the, at one time, uh, I think he was the distributor who first brought in Rossellini's pictures. It got a few reasonably good reviews. It got a nice blurb from Mark Van Doren, and, uh, who was very kind about it. And it had a few, you know, it had a few good moments in it, but with the exception of, uh, one or two of the actors, they were all terrible actors, and I knew nothing about directing <laughs> any actors. Well, how, and did you, how did you go about directing them? Just sort of, uh, well, I just, directing? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was really, you know, just, uh, uh, it was really just, uh, well, actually, from some of the so-called professional efforts I've subsequently seen, you know, people doing, I would say I didn't go about it that much differently than a lot of people do, but I didn't really know anything, you know. Uh, but there were, there were some good moments in it, and uh, as I say, it even got a few good reviews. But uh, it uh, never, never returned a penny of its investment. Uh, Was this your own dough you put up? No. I, I raised the money privately and uh, then while this picture was uh, took a long time to edit the film and get all the you know the thing done I, I spent over a year on it and uh, uh, it opened at the Guild Theater in New York and it was pretty apparent you know that it was terrible you know and uh while it was still playing, I decided, well, I'd better, uh, I'd better get another script very fast, uh, and try to promote some more money on the strength of the, just the fact that the thing was playing. Because, uh, I, it wasn't apparent to me how I was gonna earn a living or do anything, you know. And again, no, not one single offer ever to do anything, you know, from anybody. So I, uh, 
been about two weeks, knocked together another script with somebody, and uh, this time it was sort of a reaction to the other one. Uh, this was nothing but action sequences. forest, not a war that has been fought, or one that will be, but any war. And the enemies who struggle here do not exist unless we call them into being. This forest then, and all that happens now, is outside history. Only the unchanging shapes of fear and doubt and death are from our world. These soldiers that you see keep our language and our time, but have no other country but the mind. Do you think they're looking for us? It's one of ours, all right. Can't see us. But maybe they saw our plane back there. There isn't much left of it to see, unless it's still burning. Even if they could spot us, there isn't anything that they could do to help us here. Here. Yeah. Six miles behind the enemy lines. Well, that's not too far. Not too far. In those six miles, there are probably thousands of guys. And every one of them was taught to shoot at uniforms like this. If you're so worried about that, why don't you keep your voice down? I'm not worried. What's going to happen, Lieutenant? If somebody around us saw a plane go down, they might be looking for us in the woods already. I'd feel a lot easier if our arsenal was better stocked. It isn't very much. Too bad you fellas didn't get your rifles out of the plane. Let's see what can be done. Once you understand how a mousetrap works, if you're clever enough, you can use it as a springboard. Here are the front lines. From our position just before we crashed, we should be in this general area. Our own lines are here, and we should be about here. There's a river that runs east of where we are now, I think. And that river cuts right through the front lines and winds up on our side. Now, as I see it, we might be able to use our reconditioned mousetrap on the river. Is that your idea? To go down the river? Yes. But how? How can we get down it? I can't swim very well. And Fletcher... We could do it on a raft at night. Well, we'll never make it any other way. It's suicide to try to walk out. I wouldn't have the vaguest idea of how and where to start. This way, we could just cruise through together in a few hours and arrive in one piece. Now, by my computations, we... Your computations? With your brilliant figuring that got us in the first place. I 
It must be somebody's pet. It has a collar. Nah, make a better watchdog. <laughs> Seems friendly enough. But we can't use a mascot on this trip. Hurry up. We don't have all day. No one has a better suggestion. Let's head for the river. Some more animals might show up. Faster, the sun is fast. Get there before it burns in the bushes. I have to do it alone. Just a corner to turn and... Me with this bunch of cripples. Nobody's safe here. Are they watching me? Blame who? I'll blame the Keep big... Keep them beaded on a string. Lost, I should look around. Getting hungry. What's up? They're all scared. How oh, much is in back of us? So angry at each other. Time for night soon. I'm going to look up later. All the twigs cracking in my head. We'll need paws for the night. Crash through myself. The bird was wounded. I don't run for no Nail them, son. Wait. What's going to hang from the trees tonight? Hurry with them. No dying in the woods. No rabbits there. No. Maybe I'm getting old. Faster. Turn on the lights, please. I'm sinking in the woods. Don't die here. Oh, scared. Dark will be all dead. All right, all right. You know, there's nothing so refreshing as an afternoon out of doors in enemy territory. It's really too bad that the sun doesn't burn as green instead of brown. Camouflage. Well, if you see some strange faces across the way, just wave to them casually and try to look as native as possible. Lieutenant! Huh? Lieutenant! Come here. Bring your binoculars. What do you want? I'd like you to see something. Around the river bend. What? I can't make out exactly what it is, but I think you'll be interested. Come on. Over there. 
See? Looks like some kind of small airstrip. Yes, you're right. Lots of rank around. Looks like a general. Sure. Sure. A general. He's a general. Let's get back and help with the raft. Mac, let's go. <laughs> All we need now is Huckleberry Finn. This ought to see us through. Yeah. It doesn't look bad at all. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Should we make sure it floats? Rafts always float. It's unfortunate that we don't have a distinguished bottle to christen it with. Yeah, we could give it a name. dark. I don't know. Perhaps they didn't see us. But it's too dangerous to wait here until we find out. But what are we going to do? How are we going to get back? Just hurry up. Let's go. That plane must have landed down that house we saw before. What's the difference? There must be something big going on down there. Maybe the generals are having a convention tonight. on the way to the river. Well, we've been running in a new direction. Whatever junk you're eating sure smells good. Like mother's own. Well, those guns look even more tempting than the food does. I've got an idea. Look, no matter what we do from here on, we're much better off with some guns. I'm going to get some of that stew first. Sydney, better grab something to eat. Maybe a long time till our next feast. You better eat something. How's the stew, Mac? Kind of cold, but cold stew's all right. Cold stew on a blazing island. We've just made a perfect definition of war, man. That's ducky. Of course, a blazing island with a tempest of gunfire around it that fans the blaze. Perhaps if we could... Somebody must have heard. 
hurt us. Grab those guns and let's get going. Well, why did you have to shoot? Forget it. Let's move. We spend our lives running our fingers down the lists in directories, looking for our real names, our permanent addresses. No man is an island. <laughs> Perhaps that was true a long time ago, before the Ice Age. The glaciers have melted away, and now we're all islands. Parts of a world made of islands only. Hey, how long are you going to hang around here? We're in a fine mess now. Uh, I'd give anything to trade places with that dog we chased yesterday. <laughs> Seems like whenever people get in a hole, they begin to get jealous of dogs. I admit that our prospects aren't very cheerful. But how about going back to see if our raft is still there? Look, if we were spotted, they'll have a trap waiting for us when we show up. Well, it's a chance. But trying to walk out is as risky today as it was yesterday. We'll scout around the river and make certain. Then what? Even if we find the raft there, even if none of them are laying for us, then what? Then we'll have to sit tight until it gets dark and hope that we don't have a full moon. We can sing old songs if we get restless waiting. Which man? Which man is Snookums? I heard that they're cannibals. So even if we get caught, you're pretty oh. safe. Leave me alone. <laughs> we may be in the woods, McClellan, but let's try to remain civilized. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right, Lieutenant. Anyway, there won't be many days left to be civilized in. We stick around these woods much longer. Don't be afraid. We're not going to hurt you. 
She's quite nice. Don't you think so, boys? Hmm. Well, what are we supposed to do with her now? I've got a wife at home. <laughs> I'm afraid she's become our uninvited guest. I must say I've had worse guests at better parties. All right, Carby. All right. Let's not forget where we are. Even though we're lost in the woods, let's try to remain civilized. Well, we can't stay here. Can we leave a fish here? Something funny. What are you going to do with it, Lieutenant? Give me your belt. You too, Fletcher. Please don't beat her. She's just scared like we are. She doesn't even talk. Oh, get a grip on yourself. No one's going to punish her. I simply want to tie her up. Now give me your belt. Let's hurry it up. My arm's getting tired. Be careful not to hurt her. She doesn't start screaming. She's a pretty little thing. Why don't we just leave her here and get going? Don't rush me. If we can make her understand this, perhaps she can tell us whether they found the raft. Habla Espanol? I'll handle it, Sidney. I'm quite sure she wasn't educated abroad. <laughs> now, let's see. You... Sea, boat, our, boat. Ball? Yes, that's it. Boat. You, sea, boat? Don't tell me she doesn't even understand you. If she can't tell us anything, let's let her go. Sure, so she can run downstream to that command post and tip our hand. You kids and your ideas. Maybe she was going there in the first place. With the fish, you mean? Sure. A general gets what he wants for dinner, no matter what. If it's fish caught or fresh strawberries or gold plates... This is hardly the time to become a revolutionary. We ought to continue to see about the raft. But we can't let her go yet. Why? What'd she do to us? If she can understand, she would have told you. Mac already told you why. Sidney, you'll stay here with the young lady until we come back. Here, take this. You're going to leave me here? Yes. I told you to watch the girl. You're going to make me stay in and not come back. I know because of yesterday. Keep calm, kid. If we're not back by night, just get in touch with the old man about a wedding. Maybe you can settle down in a treehouse and raise some monkeys. <laughs> Leave him alone, Mac. Don't listen to him. Remember, you promised to come back, Fletcher. I want you to stay here and keep an eye on her because she may prove very useful if the raft has been discovered. Hmm. We ought to be back in a couple of hours. Now, just relax. Don't get panicky. See you later, Sidney. Like me. 
The situation is desperate. I don't think I can cope with it alone. Isn't funny? Isn't it? Orderly. More fat fish that the girl caught for me. The general. I am the general. Magazine in that plane. I wouldn't have believed it. Mac, better take a look around the river bend. Be careful. We'll get to where camouflaging the ramp. I'm a little worried about Sidney back there with the girl. I don't like the way he's been acting. You're not going soft-headed and thinking about taking her along with us tonight. You're beginning to sound like Sidney. No. She could bring three friends, perhaps. But as it is, she'll remain locked in the forest like we were. That must be the one that almost nailed us. There he is again. It's him. A cocky little king. And me holding binoculars like a lady watching an opera. Binoculars. Uh, soon he'll go into his palace with all his iron lap dogs. If only this was a rifle sight. Then I could make the red eye between his ears. Then he'd see McClellan. Girls always love stories. But it's so hard to finish and wait for words. Do you want to hear more? Do you? Huh? All right. Then the spirit and magician's power goes back to the island and tells Miranda that her father's dead. The spirit sings how he's dead at the bottom of the ocean. His bones are coral, his eyes are pearls, and Miranda, her father's dead. Dead? Can't you understand anything? Dead. 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 Now do you understand? Clear? Everything's all right. 
I'd like to talk to you about that house. What house? That house down there. The one where we saw that general yesterday. Wait around, Mac. Right now, I'd like you to go back to Sydney. I didn't like the way he was acting when we left. I'm a little concerned. But don't you think that Do as we... I say, will you? As soon as we're through here, we'll join you. I don't want anything to go wrong back there. Brought you some water. Put your arms around me. I know. Wait. I knew you'd like me. Just a minute. Where's the girl? Uh, Answer me. Uh, what have you done? Tell me, I'll pound it to a jelly. She was tired. She went to lie down. Over there. Don't annoy her, Mac. Come here. It wasn't my fault. The magician did it. Honest. 
Prospero the magician. First we're a bird, and then we're an island. Before I was a general, and now I'm a fish. Hurrah for the magicians! <laughs> The river. It's blood, Mac. Cold. Cold. I'm going for a swim. Come on in, Mac. Listen to them. <laughs> it's blood. <laughs> What happened? Where's Sidney and the girl? He... Kid must have gone out of his head. When I got back, he... He was just laying there. The girl's dead. Over there. He shot her. Where is he? He's gone. He yelled something about... How the magician does it. Now, before he was something, and now he's a fish. Before I could stop him, he ran away towards the river. He kept laughing and screaming. We can't do anything about it now. I'll let the move again. Nice spot near the raft would be the best place to wait till night. I guess there's going to be more elbow room than I thought. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about that house down the river. And the general. Kill him. Yeah. No, I won't hear any more about it. I don't know what's gotten into you, Mac. So you saw a general. So what? The raft is all set, and in a couple of hours, we'll be on it. Raft. Raft, raft, raft. Can't you see any further? A general, why he... How many times do we have to go over this? Once I tell you again, it's one of their generals to me. He's cheap at my rate of exchange, but our lives aren't. Your rate of exchange. <laughs> you make me laugh. If you had any guts, you... Look, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Forget about the general for a minute. What about the plane you saw? That's right. What about that plane? We've already been over this. It looks like a two-seater and with that small field for me to clear. Look, one of us can take that raft downstream to the field when it gets dark and start shooting to draw the sentries from the house. And the other two can plug that guy and get away in a plane while I keep him busy from the raft. You? Sure, me. They get you. You'd never make it back alive. Who else could do it the way I could? You couldn't. You'd be right at home, sitting down nice and comfortable in a cockpit, looking down on what's going on. Sure. You recite a few sayings you've picked up, and everything will be all right. I'd just as soon make the trip back myself. On a raft. Do you think you'd have any chance at all to get away with it alive? I don't know. Here I am. I'm 34 years old. I've never done anything important. Nothing. When this is over, I'll fix radios and washing machines, and they'll say, Good boy, Mac. That's all. I don't care if they got a million generals. There's one two miles from here. If his hide's gonna keep me from going nuts, like Sidney, only in a different way, I'm gonna put up my own hide. But why should we? The raft's still there. As soon as it gets dark, it can take us all back tonight. Look. 
If I draw him down to the river, you and Fletcher can do the job and get away in a plane. What do you say, Fletch? Well, it's not that I want to seem important. Half the trouble in the world happens because some people do. But I think half the good things happen that way, too. If we could get away with it, it would sure be better. I... I don't know the words to say what I mean, but... This is something for me. Something... Uh, sure, I... I guess we can all probably make it back on that thing, but when you walk and walk through the woods and then suddenly they dangle a general in front of you like magic, and you know it's only for this once, you can't turn your back on them. None of us asked to be here, but we all have to gamble. It's not as if we could refuse. We had to gamble once we crashed. That general raised the stakes, and we've been so lucky. Why shouldn't we put up a little more than we have to? What are you living for, anyway? To make talk? Why? Why is your life so precious? Why? Can you tell me why? Why? They always corner me with that why. If I knew a decent answer to it, I'd shout it, publish it, write it on walls with chalk. Do it for me. Well, we have nothing to lose but our futures. Okay. I guess we'll leave you now. Remember, don't start for a half an hour. If the plane isn't still there, we'll have time to get back to you. Don't worry, it'll be there. Uh, good luck, Mac. See you soon. Try not to get your feet wet. <laughs> yeah. You look out for your head. <laughs> okay, Phil. So long. Mac, I hope that you sometime... You talk too much. I guess we both do a little. Sometimes talk is an indispensable medicine. Yeah, but you get sicker later. Good luck, Lieutenant. I didn't really mean what I said before about guts. Yes, you did. But don't let it bother you. Take it easy, fella. Yeah. still there, so I guess there's no really good excuse to go back. I guess not. Can you see? Hold it. Hold it. Yes, there he is. Huh. What time is it? We have about ten minutes before Mac begins. Let's hurry. into one night and one man and one gun. It hurts too much to keep hurting everyone else in every direction and to be hurt with all the separate hates exploding day after day. You can't help it. A curse buzzes out of your mouth with every word you say. And nobody alive can tell which is which or what you mean. Yeah. You try door after door when you hear voices you like behind them. But the knobs come off in your hand.
Go in. Huh? Where did you find him? One of the men did down by the river. He was very busy baying at the moon. There, Proteus. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Staying away without leave for two whole days. An officer should know how to control himself better. Have a drink, Captain. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You must never, never do that again, Proteus. Don't you know that there are evil spirits without bodies who roam the forests looking for unsuspecting dogs like you? And that when you open your jaws to disturb the moon, why, they leap into your mouth and possess you. Then you could become a spy, a murderer, or even a traitor. Not your dog, sir. He knows his allegiance. Have you been alert, Proteus? Have you detected all the distant marchings? Has your wet nose become aware of all the blood on the grass? What else can you tell us beside your puppy dog sadness? I wish you could tell us where those enemy soldiers from that wrecked plane are. They've been bothersome for the last two days. They'll soon grow tired of starving and being hunted. Even Proteus grows tired of it after two days. See that Lieutenant Proteus gets something to eat. Yes, sir. Nobody's gonna cry for me later or cheer for me now. Nobody else is me. I know that. Who else but me is buried under the chain of everything I ever did? I didn't mean any of it. It was all wrong. Yeah, good riddance. Oh, what a trade. Him for me. What a thing to come to at the end. Like building a bridge. Or stealing the crown jewels. Thanks, General. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take the tombstone if it's really mine. Waiting. Waiting to kill. Waiting to heal. Waiting to die. I waited in the north for four divisions. One by one, the men turned black. As we waited for the last snowflake to dissolve. Across the valley, our enemies blew on their cold hands until no more breath came. Then they were dead, and they knew it. We were so well prepared for death that the armistice was a mutual disappointment. in his counting house, figuring up the corpses on his maps, full of his supper. Oh, they'll get him soon. A duck in a shooting gallery. And I'll be the wheel under all the ducks and all the bull's eyes. Huh. I should talk. The clay pigeon on a slow raft. Frankly, I still become uneasy when I find myself trapped, directing the courses of frightened men. I cannot quite admit that it is I who am creating slaughter in this abyss. Or that I left the road. Or that I ordered this or that. I'm trapped. What is a prison for me? I make a grave for others. Do your health, sir. Ah, it's the only way to finish up. Alone, like.
like the North Pole in the middle of the night. The river is helping me out of my life. Sometimes these maps. Sometimes as I look at these maps, I wonder if my own grave isn't being planned. Here. Or here. Or here. thousand things. I'm a little scared, though. Just a little. Like kissing my great-grandmother when she was dying. I missed him. I think he's only wounded. Come on. We have to finish him off. But they stopped shooting at the river. They'll be here any minute. Come on, let's go. Please, please, we don't have any time.
came back. Can I come? Huh? I won't be any bother. Sure, kid. Huh. Hop on. Huh. There's plenty of room. You tired? Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for stopping. There was so much noise in there. All right, Mac. You rest. I'll be quiet. You know, I lost my watch. Mac, look, don't close your eyes. The trees. They're naked. They're naked, Mac. Wow. What happened to the sergeant? I don't know, sir. He might make it. Sir, with your permission, I'd like to go down to the river and, and watch for him for a while. Yes, sir. The same goes for me. You both certainly have the right to it, if you wish. Do you think you'll come back? I don't know. I'm not sure yet whether even we've come back. I think we've all traveled too far from our own private boundaries to be certain about these other things anymore. But come back to ourselves. Part of me is glad, but... Yeah. I'm glad in a way, too. And I feel free all of a sudden. But somehow I don't want what I wanted before. I know it's good. There's nothing else I can want. I'm all mixed up. I wish I could want what I wanted before. Does your head bother you? No, it's something else. It's... What's that? I guess I'm not built for this. Nobody ever was. It's all a trick we perform. When we'd rather not die immediately. Come on. <laughs> 